Okay, we're working on a 1994 Mazda Miata. We've been working on this car some time. We've made a, a couple different videos on this vehicle. Uh, the problem this vehicle is having is that at times, it's an automatic transmission. Uh, the transmission would not, would not shift into overdrive. Or sometimes it would shift into overdrive, but it wouldn't stay and it would sporadically come out of overdrive. Um, now these cars will not go into overdrive until the engine temperature warms up. But even after the engine temperature warmed up, it would go into overdrive at times, and sometimes it wouldn't stay in there, it would just kick out. So what we did on this thing, and you can watch some of the other videos we have on this vehicle, is we monitored the shift solenoids. We tapped into the uh, wire harness down here underneath the vehicle, I'm underneath the car right now, it's the transmission passenger side, and you can see that we tapped in to the shift solenoids, and we actually monitored the signal that the transmission computer is sending to the shift solenoids. And we actually were able to see that the transmission control module is commanding the overdrive to kick in and out. So it's not a transmission problem, it's a command problem from the transmission module. So at that point you have to look at all the things that um, communicate to the transmission control module like, for example, you look at the tr throttle position sensor. We did a video on that. You may look at the speed sensor. Uh, the thing we're looking at today is going to be the transmission fluid temperature sensor. And this is on the driver's side of the vehicle, right here, and it's right on the cooler line that goes into the, uh, into the um, front, uh, front of the transmission. This is the sensor right here, and you can see, let me try to get my phone right. You can see it just screws right into a, a banjo fitting for the, uh, for the transmission cooler line. And you can see this thing is a little compromised anyway. It's got silicone on it, like the wires are a little bit naked there. So this may be the problem because if the transmission uh, may not shift into overdrive until it sees the transmission fluid warm up. And if this sensor isn't working right, then it could be sporadically telling the computer that the transmission fluid is at temperature or not at temperature and kicking it in and out of overdrive. So what we did to try to narrow that down uh, is we bypassed the transmission temperature sensor. And we're, we're, becoming, we're becoming the transmission sensor. We're doing our own thing with the transmission sensor. The first thing we did is we unplugged the transmission temperature sensor from the wire harness, which is right here, this gray connector. And we just put two leads in there, and we actually just shorted them out. We just connected them together. So um, these transmission temperature sensors Looked like they run from anywhere between 1.5 uh, ohms resistance, 1.5 K ohms resistance uh, when they're cold to about 300 ohms resistance when they're, when they're hot. Um, so what we did is we shorted out, we got zero ohms. Now what the car did is it shifted a little late, but it did go into overdrive once the engine temperature warmed up and it never kicked out. So um, we're thinking that it has a solid overdrive now, so we're thinking the transmission temperature sensor is the problem. Okay, so this is the reading on the transmission temperature sensor, and the car is cold right now. And as you can see, it's four, about 1,500 ohms right now. We've got our meter set to 2,000 ohms, or 1.5, so we're 1,500 ohms. Now, I can tell you that when this transmission was warm, I drove it this morning, and I got a, a normal operating temperature, this reading on this meter the same reading was at 300 ohms. So I'm thinking that when the when, it, when the transmission is at normal operating temperature, that this fluid temp sensor right here should run about 300 ohms resistance. Now right now I've got it shorted out, so I've got zero ohms resistance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a resistor in the place in the, uh, in the wire harness end. I'm going to put this resistor right here, and this resistor, if I could do it with holding my phone, same time when I when I go into it, this resistor right here runs right around 300 ohms. So this resistor, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in the wire harness. I'm just gonna plug it in to the wire harness right here where I'm shorting it out right now, and I'm gonna put the resistor in place of the transmission temp sensor. And um, once I do that, if this thing's driving like it's supposed to, because the computer will see that the transmission fluid is warm all the time. Uh, if it has a good solid overdrive, then we, we know we've got a tra bad transmission fluid temp sensor. So we're going to try that and see what it does.
Okay, so now as you can see, we have our resistor plugged into the harness side of the vehicle. So this becomes the transmission fluid temp sensor now, 300 ohms, a warm temp sensor. We'll see how it does. Okay, so now these right here are our test lights we have wired into our transmission connector. A little tool we made years ago. And this monitors, this monitors shift solenoids one, two, and three for first, second, third, and overdrive. So we gotta let this thing warm up a little bit. We gotta get the engine temperature up to uh, normal. And we're gonna drive it now that we have our resistor in place of our, our transmission temp sensor and see what it does. All right, we're pulling out of the shop now. Now, the way it works is these lights, um, well, all three will be lit up for first gear. Um, the, uh, the light to the left will go off, and you'll be in second gear. Then the middle light will go off, you'll be in third. And then the light to the right will go off. All three lights will be off at that time, and you'll be in fourth. And um, that's the way you monitor the shifts. That's the way I set it up. So let's see what it does here. All right, we're pulling out of the parking lot now, so you get an idea how it works. I've made a video on this already, showing this, but anyway, that's second gear right there. You've seen light one go off. That's third gear, and I can tell you that the transmission is shifting a lot sooner now that I got the 300 uh, ohms resistor in place. And there is fourth, okay, and we got, we're at right temperature, so we are right into fourth gear. Now I can tell you this, that when I had the, um, when I just had the um, uh, connector shorted out, connector that comes off the transmission control module, this vehicle would not go into overdrive until we got to 46 miles an hour. And you can see that we're way under that now, and this thing shifted nice and early. So uh, what the computer is seeing now is seeing a warm transmission temperature sensor, because we have a 300 ohm resistor in there. Okay, so right now we're at zero. We just stopped. Let's watch the upshifts one more time here. All right, the light is green, and we're going. We're in second. Let me just pack this up so you can see we're out here. Now we're in third, and we're way under 40 miles an hour. And this thing went ahead, already went ahead and shifted into overdrive. Now, like I said before, when I had this thing shorted out with no resistance on the connector going to the transmission control module, this thing was shifting late, going from uh, second to third and it wouldn't get overdrive until about 46 miles an hour. And that's probably because I had it shorted out and it was way low resistance. So now that I've got the right resistance on the connector uh, going to the transmission control module, it's shifting nice. So my test is going to be, if it stays solid in overdrive and doesn't kick out uh, like it was doing before, then I know I've got a bad um, transmission temp uh, sensor on. So I'm gonna get up on the interstate, I'm gonna drive it for a spell and see how she does. Okay, so far so good. We've driven it a good little ways now. Uh, what was hap happening before is, at times, you would drive us along, and you'd be doing the speed. You'd be doing around 60, 50, 60 miles an hour, and the third light, the light to the, to the right, would come back on, and it would kick out of overdrive. Uh, so, you know, that's definitely the transmission control module commanding the transmission to go back to third gear from overdrive. And that's the problem we were having with this thing. Um, now, here's the thing about this type of car. It's a 1994 model. And there's not really, when you hook up, at least when we hook up our scan tool, but we couldn't want, we couldn't see any data like you can today. You know, we couldn't watch uh, the transmission fluid temp sensor and see it dropping out, or the speed sensor. The only thing that our, our snap on scan tool was letting us do is pull codes. That's it. And guess what? There were no codes. So we didn't have much to go on. So when you have, it is, I remember working on these cars back in the day, when you have this kind of uh, information to work with, you got to go to each sensor and kind of do what I'm doing here. You got to monitor the, uh, the transmission shift solenoids like we're doing here. That's why we made this tool. I actually made this tool back in the 90s. Uh, so you monitor the transmission shift, shift commands. And if you have a bad command like we do here, then you got to start looking at the input sensors. Uh, things like uh, throttle position sensor, mass airflow sensor, temperature sensors, so engine temperature sensors, transmission fluid temperature sensors, speed sensors, things like that. You know, and you just got to kind of find it. Uh, we've been working on this car for quite some time. 
um, and uh, you know we're, we're substituting uh, a resistor in place of the transmission fluid temperature sensor and so far you know <laughs> fingers crossed here right uh, it's working so let me drive it a little further and see how she does another thing you had you know again in order and another thing you add to this pile of, of, of uh, mysteries is that this problem only happened when you drove the car extended distances so you had to drive it a really long ways in other words you think it's fixed you give it back to the customer and it turns out that it's not never been through that before right, I'm gonna go a little further here all right we're slowing down now and you can see this thing just kicked back out out of overdrive and it is probably around you know 30 miles an hour 25 miles an hour when it did the uh, automatic downshift from overdrive back to third uh, so I'm, I'm off the exit now I'm um, gonna get ahead and get back on it again back on the interstate head back to the shop this is a pretty good road test probably about 10 mile road test I did so you know hopefully hopefully we got it nailed now uh, I'm probably drive this car over the weekend and um, you know just to make sure that this thing is working and if it is then I'm going to try to find a transmission fluid temp sensor for this vehicle which could be a challenge being that it's a what 28 year old car at this point something like that now goodness goodness gracious where's the time go all right so we're getting back on the interstate now and you can see that we're making our upshifts and we're in overdrive at about uh, what, 35, 30, 38 miles an hour, we kicked into overdrive. And uh, again, you know, this thing would just automatically kick out. I just take a notion to kick out. So, so far, we're, we're, we're holding it overdrive. Let's see how she does. Okay, so far so good, but you know what? I'm gonna try and imitate what exactly this thing was doing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a forced downshift and I'll show you what this thing was doing just to give you an idea. So when I, it was doing something like that right there, but just kick in and out. I did that with the gas pedal, but you would go down the road and you would see that that light come back on, and when you did, you'd be in third gear, and then it would, you know, it would, it would go off and you'd be back and forth. Uh, and sometimes it actually would flicker a little bit, you know, you get a little erratic shift. Now so far with that resistor in place of the transmission fluid temp sensor, uh, we haven't got it to do that. So. You know, we're, we're really kind of hoping we got the problem nailed down now. All right, we're going to get hang it off the interstate now. We've took this thing for an extended road test. Uh, it's passed this road test. Again, I think I'm going to continue to drive it for a few more days. You know, just because you never know. You know, you think you got them fixed and, uh, you know, you get the phone call, right? So, um, if it continues to drive like it's driving now, then... We have a bad uh, ATF, automatic transmission fluid temp sensor, which is on the cooler line, as I showed you earlier. Uh, I will tell you that one reason why we made this channel, and we made this channel, what, seven years ago, was for stuff like this. I mean, I, I was driving cars, I was having problems coming to shop like this, and they really stumped us. And, you know, you'd finally persevere and find a solution. And... Uh, you know, I was thinking that we really should document this somehow. I used to, years ago, I used to write it down in a diary. Uh, but, you know, I started making videos of it, you know, once we found what was wrong with it. So I would remember what it was, because as you get older, you forget. Um, and then I started posting them on YouTube, and um, we're still doing that today. Um, so this procedure that I'm doing is, is really for, you know, a lot of, it doesn't really pertain just to miles to Miata. It pertains to a lot of older cars that you really can't get a data stream on. Um, and what you have to do is you just got to substitute, if you can, the uh, the sensor in question. Uh, for, and for this example, it was the transmission fluid temp sensor. You know, you figure out how these sensors are working, what kind of reading they're giving to the, to the, to the module, and you become the sensor. You know, you put a resistor in, you open the circuit, you short the circuit, you know, whatever you do to try to duplicate what the sensor uh, sends to the uh, module. And, and try to determine whether or not it's a problem. Or you can monitor the signal on the sensor um, in question, and when the problem happens, look at that signal. So, so far, uh, we're about, um, you know, 30 miles an hour. This thing is in overdrive nice. I'm gonna kind of kick it down to third, and uh, let it shift back up to overdrive. Uh, you know, 
around this point right here is when you would get the problem. Um, you drive it for a good while and it would kick out of overdrive. All right, looks like we finished our road test. Um, so far, all is well. Pulling back into the shop now. And um, like I said, I feel like I'm gonna go ahead and drive this car a few more days. I've had it long enough. You know, it belongs to a car dealership um, that like us very well because they've let us have it for a long time. So, hey, you know what? I might just put the top down on this thing. It's supposed to be a pretty weekend in our town. Uh, maybe take the wife and the dog for a ride since we have overdrive now. Hey. It's a great day. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. Have a blessed day.